live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Welcome to theCUBE, Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. This is our first day of covering AWS reInvent 2019. Dave, we have a jam-packed three days here, the seventh time theCUBE has been at reInvent. It's like the Super Bowl here. It is, I, I, I stole that from you, but you just said it back to me. <laughs> it is like the Super Bowl here. We're very pleased to welcome a couple of guests from Refinitiv, Refinitiv's first time on theCUBE, as well as our guest. Please welcome Hannah, we've got Hannah Helen, Hellion, sorry, VP of Cloud Propositions, and James Turk, the head of architecture and cloud from Refinitiv. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you. you, Thank yes. you for having us. So Great here we here. are in the expo hall with thousands and thousands of folks, but I'd love for you guys to start, Hannah, we'll start with you. Tell our audience about Refinitiv. You're a data company, but really what is it that you guys do? What do you deliver to the community? Absolutely, absolutely. So simply put, we are, as you said, we are a data company. So we serve the global financial community. So looking at banks, asset managers, hedge funds, corporations with financial and risk data. So very powerful combination in this cloud environment. So obviously without data, cloud is empty. So that's where we come in. <laughs> And look, what type of data are we talking about? You know, data as, from a thematic perspective, it is, there's, we know, and every company knows on some level, there's tremendous value in the data. The challenge is being able to access it and unlock the value. Give us a slice of, in capital markets for example, what are some of the types of data services that you provide to your customers? So we have all sorts of data. So we obviously source the data from lots of different sources, whether it's coming from, from exchanges or from the, from the market data sources. And then our customers use that to analyze the data and really running the, the back testing for, for those data sets. They also co-mingle our data with alternative data sets as well, as well as their own internal data. So it's all about that, that analytical layer that they can add on top of our data. Okay, and it's data as a service, essentially, is that right? We do have some data as a service. We also deliver the data to the client. People are interested in accessing data in all sorts of different ways, including increasingly on the cloud. So talk more about your cloud offering, your, your cloud and your title, cloud architecture. What's so one of the things that we're doing is we have a combination, we're an interesting company in that we both have our own pieces of cloud infrastructure for our own purposes, but also increasingly we need to build and deliver solutions for our customers to be able to consume data in the cloud. So that means being able to work with them to put it into the cloud that they want it to be going into, to be able to work out how we can keep that data up to date and to do it in a cost effective manner for our clients to be able to get the most out of it. How do you deal with the inherent problems of data quality, you're getting data from diff different sources, how do you take care of that? Absolutely, so that's, how, that's really our, our core strength and expertise that we have, we have been doing that for years and years. So again, coming from, from different sources, we normalize the data on our site, we clean it up, and then serve for our customers in, a, in our own information model. And we have created this uh, permanent and unique identifier called PermID. So we map all the data sets, so it's, it's very easy for our customers to consume that, and then also map it back to their the own data and third party data sets. Where does the global security come into play? Because that's a topic and thing that we talk about at every event. When you're talking about all these different external data sources, sure. quality, but security is, I imagine, fundamental. How do you help Absolutely. deliver that? Absolutely, so obviously from the, from the cloud perspective, that has been a big theme in the, in the public cloud environment, and I think we are seeing more and more feedback from our customers that as it comes down to public cloud, I think they are very comfortable actually now with, uh, with the privacy and security of, of public cloud, so that has been I think big change past couple of years. I haven't personally seen those concerns anymore coming, coming from customers the way that we saw a couple of years ago. One of the so. interesting things that we're seeing is an increasing move is that our clients want to be able to mix their data with our data and so increasingly you're seeing interesting solutions coming to market which allow them to keep their data where their data is held on their cloud or even on their own premises and mix that with our data and so we're trying to bring together those solutions where a customer doesn't have to put all of our data with theirs, put all of their data with ours, but keep that segregation, as you say, because that PII data and all of those sorts of things are much more important these days for us to be able to, be able to show that is how the, the data is being segregated and that things are being kept apart in an appropriate way. And, and, and who's responsible for that? Is that you guys, is it the cloud it's provider, is it the customer, so it's a shared responsibility yeah. model? 
Where, where, does, where do you leave off and where does the customer pick up? How, what do you advise customers in terms of, hey, here's what we're going to do for you and now you have to be responsible for X. Yep. What, what does that line look like? Well, I, quite often defining that service boundary is something that we continue to work on. So historically, we've delivered uh, data to clients and so we've had lines going into a client's uh, um, premises and then there's an obvious point at the end of that where this was us and that's you. As we get more into the cloud space, we have to define much more clearly what that service boundary is. So again, as we're developing out some of our cloud propositions, that's a key thing that we're working through as to what is it that the client wants to control and what is it that we need to control. Yeah, that's very true, Hannah. I mean, 10 years ago, you would talk to financial services companies, say, we will never be in the cloud, and now right, they're exactly. much more comfortable. Now you guys do this cloud survey each year. Yes. Um, what, what are you seeing? I'll share some of our data. I wonder if it matches. What, what, are, you, what are the big trends? Sure, sure. So, yeah, so we are doing this. Uh, it's almost becoming a tradition for us to do this cloud survey on a yearly basis. So it's quite interesting to kind of compare the previous surveys and where we are today. So what we have found out uh, on the survey this year is that the IT uh, investment is very much going to public cloud. So I think when we started the cloud survey a couple of years ago, we saw that about 32% of the IT investment went to public cloud, but then for next year, that is increasing almost to, to 50%. So obviously, public cloud is definitely here to stay. I think another, another key trend that we saw from the survey is that I think the testing that the companies have been doing, like they are learning more and more, and they are really seeing the benefit from, from public cloud now. And I would highlight that especially our hedge fund customers, they were highlighting that they saw also cost benefits with the, with the cloud, so about 92% saw that actually when they move to the cloud and do the, the projects in the cloud environment, it really saves money for them, which is quite interesting because also then at the same time throughout many of the customer discussions, like it can be also a challenge for, especially for large organizations as they move to the cloud environment, that how do you kind of manage that uh, a traditional technology stack and when you move to the, the public cloud. So it's kind of two-sided uh, way there. But I think the general consensus as it comes down to cloud survey was that uh, many of the organizations, they really saw that big transition that organizations are going through and that it can be very, really big, big impact for their own, own business. So very, very positive message on that part. Let's dig into that a little bit more from a transition or we'll use Andy Jassy's or transformation. James, I'd love to get your perspective on what has changed in the last few years to see the numbers that Helen talked about, um, really, Hannah, excuse me, um, going up so significantly as we know that you know, cloud 1.0's compute and storage and um, networking and maybe some data services, but what do you think has fundamentally changed across industries such that public cloud now is much more strategic? Well, I think for a lot of firms, um, particularly in financial services, we spend a lot of time looking at analytics and being able to run those large analytical jobs and be able to scale them. I think that as people have become more comfortable about the data that they can put into the cloud and being able to get access to more data through companies like Refinitiv, being able to run those machine learning jobs, and it was really interesting to see the keynote this morning, to see Amazon really putting a lot of effort into democratizing the use of machine learning through SageMaker. Thought it was very exciting. Um, we think that that is going to be an increasing thing. So as you see in financial services, people are looking for those large workloads. They have really large data sets. And so the only way that they can do that in a kind of realistic manner is being able to use public cloud. And then you see them taking a lot of the old traditional systems and, and uh, as we're seeing the risk appetite to be able to get onto cloud becoming more, they're going through the same sort of transformation which we see many firms having gone through. You know, the, the developers are insisting that they're getting the best tools so that it can be, have the agility to deliver what their clients want. And again, one of the best ways of doing that is moving onto a public cloud infrastructure that really delivers those tools to you. I wonder if you could talk about what you're seeing in terms of adoption of new tech. So, well, I said we share some of our data. At the macro, you know, spending slowing down. It's, it's reverting to pre-2018 levels. It's not falling off a cliff, uh, but, but when you look at the spending data from ETR and others, it's you know, slowing down. Financial services is a bellwether. You're seeing less experimentation and sort of more narrowing of their bets. They're placing bets on things that they know are going to work. They've been experimenting with digital transformation for the last couple of years, and now they're saying, hey, we're now going to double down on the things that work, we're going to unplug the things, the legacy stuff, so we can get rid of some of our technical debt. What are you seeing in terms of the, the, the trends of technology adoption, for, particularly for emerging 
tech right. within yeah. FS. Yeah, and I think you touched on this, uh, this briefly, but I think what we are seeing is that the, when, the, when we started cloud discussions with our customers, so we, they all started with the kind of the back-end uh, technology IT conversation at that time, but I think that trend, as you say as well, so it's moving very much to the end users, and end users, for example, data scientists, picking the analytical tools that they want to, to consume. And I think that's a, that's a very big trend that we are seeing. So again, AI, ML, analytics in general that you can add on top of the, the cloud environment and on top of the data, that's, that will be the big thing happening. One of the things that Andy Jassy said this morning, James, is in sort of these four kind of essentials for transformation to happen. He said the first one is you've got to get senior executive alignment, and, it, and the second thing is it, it has to be this, and I use the word aggressive, aggressive top-down approach. What are some of the changes that you're seeing with respect to, you know, where it comes to maybe what, uh, what, what you said, Hannah, about the emerging technologies and the end users really and the data scientists needing to be able to get their hands wet with all this, but what are you seeing in terms of organizations that you work with where is that senior leadership really getting on board where public cloud is a strategy that is driven top down? Absolutely, increasingly you're seeing that happen is that it really is going to be the top down uh, strategy. There are a number of very large capital markets firms who have come out and said that they're going to adopt varying cloud providers and you know, increasingly that's because the level of trust has gone up and the level of maturity of the cloud providers has also increased. So a few years ago you would speak to the cloud providers and they really wouldn't understand the need to engage with the regulators. Now companies have large teams of people who go out and engage with the regulators and they will partner with the financial institutions to make sure that we're getting the right sort of level of engagement and the right level of permission to do these things. So that means that the, the senior management are there. And I think that also the senior management you know, finally are starting to see some of the benefits flow through in terms of a combination of the agility, the different sort of cost controls and the elasticity. And if you think about some of the nature of the workloads that financial institutions run, you've got a lot of this overnight processing which still goes on for creating risk reports and all those sorts of things, really well suited for uh, elasticity. And uh, in the last few years, you've seen just this massive increase in the regulatory requirement for those things. And certainly at institutions that I've worked with, you end up in a situation where you're saying, well, in order to be able to accommodate just working out what I need to do there, I'd need to build three different data centers. Clearly nobody is doing that anymore. You're going to go out, you're going to partner with your cloud provider, and they're going to provide you with that capability. That may not be something that you need in the long term, but it'll be something that will help you work out what it is that you do need, and then you can turn that into a normal workload. So AWS, AWS obviously is a cloud provider for you. Yeah. There may be others as well, but um, you saw some of the announcements today. You mentioned some of the machine learning and AI stuff, yes. SageMaker. You also saw a lot of activity around the, 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 the data store, you know, Redshift and, and separating compute from storage. Uh, is that something that you care about? Is that your customers have to worry about that? Sometimes they ask you for the solution. Uh, we super care about this. In fact, one of the big things that we're looking at at the moment, and uh, I was really interested in the announcements today, but exactly that is how do we get our data into people's data lakes? As I said, how do we do that in a way where we're making sure that the uh, um, commitments that we have on digital rights management are being honored? And how do we work with um, cloud providers like Amazon about how we do that? So we have very strong relationships with Amazon. We have very strong relationships with other providers as well. And so we are trying hard to work out what the best solution is because to be honest with you, we have to deliver where our clients want the data to be. So we're working with lots of different providers on this, but these are all really interesting times. And this focus on the data and how you get the data into people's data lakes is really interesting to us and something where we're pushing very hard. Yeah, and then, and then how you act on it. There's a whole new layer of compute being driven. Yeah. New workloads that are emerging as a result of that data. It's not just throw it in the data lake anymore. It's I have to extract insights. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Talk to us about how, on that front, how are you helping, Hannah, we'll start with you, how are you helping customers, maybe a, a large enterprise legacy organization, actually start to use data for right. competitive advantage and business differentiation? Especially Absolutely. where the enterprise is concerned where they most likely have yeah. competitors that are born in the cloud, that have the agility and the speed and the, yeah. the appetite to take risks. How are you helping customers unlock this data and go, wow, this is a huge advantage Absolutely. for our business. Absolutely. So obviously, as, as I said earlier, so because we are a data company, so our customers know, know us from, from that, that perspective. So they come to us for, for both uh, financial and risk data. So that's kind of one, 
go to place to get everything. And then uh, we are obviously working very closely with our customers to also offer them new additional data sets. So things like alternative data obviously being one that you again want to go mingle your own data with the third party data with alternative data sets as well. So we for example formed the partnership with a company called Battlefin earlier this year, which has this very nice technology to onboard different alternative data sets and then we are onboarding those data sets for our customers again, combining that with our overall information model. But it's really again coming back to that flexible uh, question that we want to make sure that our data can be served in the environment where our customers are. So whether they are in public cloud, private cloud, whether they have their on-prem solutions still, obviously with, especially with the larger institutions, they still have those. Uh, as well as we, we hosting the, the offerings for them as well. So it's all about that flexibility that we would be offering. Excellent, well Hannah, James, thank you for joining Dave and me, sharing with our audience who Refinitiv is, what you do, and really kind of this importance of data as we're in this new next gen of cloud. We appreciate your time. Thanks thank you very you. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from day one of our coverage of AWS reInvent 19. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.